Hi, my name's Nick, and this five-minute talk is about the cardiac access. So, what is the cardiac access? It's the average direction of the flow of electricity or depolarization through the heart, the mean electrical vector. Since most electrical activity takes place in the left ventricle with some contribution from the right, it makes sense that most of the mean impulse will be in that direction. The more muscle that's in the left ventricle, the more the access will move to the left. The more muscle that's in the right ventricle, the axis will rotate to the right. Damage to the cardiac muscle will also alter the direction of flow and cause the axis to deviate. So how do we determine the axis? The three limb leads will give us a view from the right, AVR, the left, AVL, and the foot, AVF. But there are three further limb leads on a 12 lead ECG. Where do they come from? You may have heard of Einhoven's triangle. Its details is beyond the scope of this talk, but essentially you can create three further virtual leads. Lead 1, by combining the information from AVR and AVL. Lead 2, by combining the information from AVR and AVF. And lead 3, by combining the information from AVL and AVF. These leads will look at the heart for the following angles or vectors. This may be a diagram that you're familiar with from your textbooks. As you may be able to see, this is why we like looking at lead 2 so much when monitoring ECGs, because the majority of the impulse in a normal heart should be travelling towards it, giving us the best general view. So back to our axis. The normal cardiac axis is considered to be from plus 90 to minus 130 degrees. Left axis deviation goes from minus 30 to minus 90 degrees. Right axis deviation goes from plus 90 to plus 180 degrees. Anything outside this is termed extreme access deviation, which is rare. So how do we calculate the access? As you know, the more an impulse travels towards a lead, then the greater the amount of positive deflection compared to negative deflection it causes. The more it travels away from a lead, then the greater the amount of negative deflection compared to positive. If the impulse is at 90 degrees to the lead, then you get an equal positive and negative deflection. What you need to do is to find a lead where you have an equal amount of positive and negative deflection, or as close to as possible. We know that the impulse must be moving at 90 degrees to this lead, but it could be in either direction. Look at the lead that runs along this vector. If the impulse is travelling away from it, there will be a large negative deflection. If the impulse is travelling towards it, there will be a large positive deflection. Congratulations, you've just worked out the cardiac axis. So let's do that again with a 12 lead ECG. The most equiphasic lead is lead 1, so the impulse must be travelling at 90 degrees to this, which means either plus or minus 90 degrees. Looking at the lead on this vector, lead AVF, we can see that the impulse is travelling towards it, therefore the cardiac axis must be plus 90 degrees, which is just about normal but close to right axis deviation. This gives us the access to the nearest 30 degrees, which is fine if the access is grossly normal or grossly abnormal, but if it's near the limits, like this, we need to be a bit more accurate. Go back to the equiphasic lead. Is it truly equiphasic, equally positive and negative, or is it slightly more positive or slightly more negative? If it's truly equiphasic, then you've found your access. If it's slightly more positive, then you can shift the access by 15 degrees towards the equiphasic lead. In this case, it's slightly more negative, therefore you can shift the axis by 15 degrees away from the equiphasic lead. This patient has right access deviation. There you go, the basics of the cardiac access in under five minutes. Use this information to dig deeper into the cardiac access and go and see as many ECGs as you can and make sure you work out the access on them. We hope you found this useful.